Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner, and we are back. And apologies, my um, review for Real Housewives is substantially late. I was thinking about combining this and making this double recap, but honestly, I don't think I'm gonna remember it if I do it back to back like that. So we're, you're gonna get this recap today, and then I will do the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. You'll get that the following day, and then you'll get the the newest episode of Real Housewives of Orange County the following day, and then I should be caught up. Um, apologies for the delay. Um, you'll also see I do have videos um, called Seeing Things Differently because I just got back from vacation. I actually went to Maine. Um, I was in the Bar Harbor area, and I was also in the Portland, Oregon area, the Black Portland, Maine area, the original Portland. And um, it was a foodie, running, drinks, nature vacation, my favorite type of vacation, which is why the hair is dead. So um, also look into that if you wanna see that. And also one last thing I wanna to plug too, and it's on, and also check out the playlist for seeing things differently. You'll get to see all my other vacations and all the different random experiences that I have. But mainly it's vacation videos and when I go away and do stuff. Um, and lastly, the last thing I want to plug is um, I also do have a video out there called um, Getting Ready With Me or Ready To Go Outside, I call it. Of course, I can't have the same name as what everyone else names it. And this shows you how I did this. Because for those who don't know, whenever you see my hair different, um, other than the natural look, I did it. Um, so... Um, if you want to check that out, definitely check that out as well. And if you want to see any other cool other hairstyles I've done in the past, definitely check out the, ready, the Get Ready With Me playlist. I have everything on the playlist, um, as well as the Orange County playlist. If you want to check out any other episodes, along with The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Okay, I think I'm done plugging. Anyway, let's get into this review. Um, this is um, season 18, episode 10. It's called Catwalk and Cat Bites. And um, this, this episode kind of continued where we left off, where um, Heather was consoling um, Shannon, and she does end up talking Shannon into joining, joining her and Tamara for dinner and drink, well, for drinks, and then they all went to dinner. Um, and then we just see that all the ladies are getting glammed up, getting ready to go to dinner. And, th and there's still a way because that charity event that Heather's hosting is the following day. So this is still like the day, the night before. And um, Katie, by the way, I know I've said this before, but I do love Katie and Jen's relationship. I'm not sure how I feel about Katie outside of it because later on this episode, I want to know your opinion. I don't know if you think she's lying or not, but... Yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. But anyway, so Katie tells um, Jen that she want that Gina mentioned the video about, you know, Shan the, the video to Shannon and how broken Shannon is. So now pretty much everyone knows what's going on and Shannon's just not good. Um, and then Alexis and then um, Emily goes and talks to um, Alexis and tries to talk some sense into Alexis one last time about just letting it go and stop constantly pushing and talking about John and the video and all the other things and stop being so hard on Shannon and just kind of be more empathetic and woman to woman about it. Um, and it kind of doesn't really work at this moment. Um, Alexis isn't really trying to hear it. And anyway, so then we go to Tamara, Heather, and Shannon. They're all getting drinks together. And Shannon is clearly not wanting to be there. She's checked out. She's done with everything. She's still pulling it together, but you, it's very clear she doesn't want to be there. And if you're wondering why I'm looking up and down like this, um, Whisper's down here, and she's like, why are you petting me and stuff? So uh, my cats get especially clingy towards me when I'm gone. So neither of the cats have really left my side too much. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So Tamara is still giving Shannon a hard time about the drinking of it all. And I don't know when it happens, but I think it happens later on either in this, um, during the dinner 
or um, at the fashion show, but I'm just going to like kind of, I know this isn't really in order, but Gina finally does talk to Tamara about it and tells her to cool it off on it because she's doing the most. And, you know, basically, you know, Gina defends her. She's like, look, it took me a while to get my stuff together. Give her time. Quit being a, basically quit being a judgmental bitch. So I think Tamara's finally le leaving it alone. Finally, after everyone's been trying to tell her a thousand times to stop. So anyway, but that's pretty much what starts off here. And then eventually all the ladies minus um, Alexis go to dinner because Alexis says, says in her confessional, yes, Shannon's already in the vulnerable state. She's done with the sin. She, she doesn't want to make it worse because Emily does tell her that Shannon knows about the video now. So she's like freaked out. Okay, so Shannon, um, so fast forward, they're all at the dinner again, as I mentioned, Shannon tells Gina and Emily that she actually did um, call her attorney, which Gina already knew about this. She called her attorney um, to let her know, to let her know to just take the offer so that this could be done. And now John doesn't want to do it anymore. And side note, I know that John and Alexis were on Watch What Happens Live. I had no interest in watching it because I don't like either of them. And from what I've heard, I don't think they made anything better. It's just, it, you know, one thing that Alexis did say during this episode, and if she would have led with that, maybe I would have, it, it would have changed things up a little bit. I do think that Shannon is not really getting enough on her about what she did as far as the DUI of it all because it is, you know, not good what she did. And, but instead, because of her approach, her and John's approach, they look like the villains and really, I mean, they are the villains, number one, and being really, really thirsty, but, um, I do also kind of agree that there should be some more focus, you know, kind of really helping Shannon navigate what to do after the fact that she's done this mistake, because this mistake is not, it's not a little baby mistake, like, but we're not talking about that because of all the antics that Alexis and um, John have been doing. It makes it impossible to talk about it, but anyway. So, anyway, we do find out, though, that John's not taking the offer because, yeah, the obvious thing is all about, and we, we kind of can tell by watching this, this is all about humiliating Shannon. It's very clear that's what he cares about. He wants to humiliate her, and he's doing an awesome job at that. And so that's what's happening, and it just doesn't look good. And so they're talking about all this and Shannon just spirals and just starts losing it. And she goes out of the room. She says she got, she went to use the restroom, but I don't really see her using the restroom because then Jen goes and follows her and Shannon is ranting and raving and just going off about the whole situation, like completely flipping out. Storm. <laughs> she she's in, She's her middle name, storming it up. And while all this is happening, okay, this is where Gina does talk to Tamara. I was like, yo, can you just leave it alone about her and her drinking? You know, Sh Shannon's going through a lot right now. It's not, this is not the time, you know, which is true. And also too, I guess, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm like all over the place when it comes to like my reviews on this because I can see all the sides of it because I have been in Shannon's shoes before. Not to severity of what she did and also clearly I'm not as old as her and this isn't about ageism or anything. When I made my mistake, I was 21. So, you know, it's not the same. It's, it's still not good, okay? That, let's be clear on that. But anyway, um... So Shannon does, after she vents to um, Shannon, um, not to Shannon, after Shannon vents to Jen, she does come back to the table 
And then she states, I don't want to talk about it anymore. She does tell the rest of the ladies that John's not willing to settle anymore, even though she offered John exactly what he wanted and what he stated. And they agree to not talk about it anymore. And then she redirects to Gina's rash in her bits, naughty bits. I was like, ew, I did not want to know that. But they laugh it off in next day. So it is the next day and Alexis and Heather talk to each other and Heather's recapping what happened. And Alexis in her delusional mind wants to patch things up with Shannon and there's nothing to patch up. I don't know why she thinks that will ever happen. She led with the way she led the way she led. Shannon now has no reason to want to ever get to know you because you came off way too strong and you've been a pick me from the beginning. And I don't blame Shannon. I would not want to patch anything up with you, especially since you're you're still you're dating my ex-boyfriend who is suing me. There's nothing to talk to you about. And this is the second time one of the people you've been sleeping with has sued me. Nothing else to talk about here. The common denominator is you. Okay? Okay. Anyway, so then Katie and Jen, they talk about um, talking to Heather and apologizing again. And again, this is what Katie brought up to Jen. And Jen states the obvious in the confessional about how horrible of an idea this is because y'all already talked about it. Let it go. You know, it's done. And I get, but I do understand where Katie's coming from because Heather did not let her talk. You know, she didn't really get to like state her case or anything like that. But if Heather's ready to move on and you want to move things along, I guess I would also just let it go too. Or just state, I'm sorry, and then eventually maybe talk it over. But you can tell, and this is where I kind of agree with Heather, Katie's not really willing to take full on accountability. She wants to throw Gina under the bus with her, which honestly, I think she's correct because I think Gina and her plot this together and Gina just threw Katie under the bus and set her up. Anyway, so yeah, Jen states the obvious. I get why, but you know, this isn't gonna work. And then um, because of everything that transpired the night before, Heather did decide to have separate events where, you know, you have Shannon with one group and then you have Alexis with the other group. So this time it's Alexis, Tamara, Gina, and Emily. They go to make, they go into town, they make biscuits. And then you have Katie, Jen, and Heather, they go and do forest therapy. Shannon, they don't know if she's coming or not because she's still sleeping and it's like in the, it's in the afternoon. But she does eventually join them. And Shannon's being kooky Shannon. But it's not the normal kooky Shannon that we love. It's like kooky Shannon who clearly... Shannon's checked out. She doesn't want to... Honestly, after that news happened, I think she wanted to leave. But she's like, I'm here so I don't get fined. It's giving that the one entire time. She... But, and also that, you know, this is a good cause. She has to do that. She, she's waiting for this fashion show to happen. So once it's over with, she can leave. Which is kind of what she did. But anyway, um, spoiler alert. And so Alexis does state that she does want to try to coexist with Shannon for the sake of the group. And the ladies are like, oh, okay, cool. Finally, finally, finally. Cause so now the other ladies are feeding into the delusion that this is going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> and then Katie tore, and so this is with, you know, the biscuit group. I'm going to call them the biscuit group. And then the forest group, after they get finished doing this meditation thing and all the weird stuff that they were doing in this forest therapy, it was weird. I know I'm into like, and by the way, I'm into spirituality and all the newer stuff and all that, but I don't know if I could get behind this one. Only part that I think I could have got behind was the meditation part. That was probably about it. But anyway, um, 
Katie tries to apologize to Heather again, and Heather doesn't love her yet again. She cuts her off yet again. She's not giving her any chances. And this time I'm like, Heather, because I don't think, I think this time it just, it, the way it came out, it came out really unfair in this case. So, and really, you know, Katie takes it in the chin and she's like, okay. And really, I think Katie maybe should have waited. I mean, really either let it go and not mention it again, or just maybe she could have waited until after she came back from, um, they came back from that trip. Because, you know, Heather's priority is the event. She doesn't care about any of this other stuff. She wants to get through this event, and then that's that on that. She's already trying her darndest to make sure that Shannon and, like, Alexis don't rip each other apart. You know? So, there's that. So next, it is time for the event, and the ladies are getting fitted. Um, and so I think it was maybe Jen and Emily, they're wearing the same outfit, but Emily is wearing them with jeans while everyone else is wearing them with black pants and stuff like this. And then she's also wearing an oversized coat. And for and you, and everyone knows. I mean, I guess for those who don't know, have, um, Emily has lost a lot of weight, okay. But and I think I've shared this before on my channel before. Her mind has not caught up to what, how her body looks, so she's super insecure about it. And for those who have never been overweight or have struggled with weight, this might be something you or who don't have any body dysmorphia is type you know, things to you, you may not understand this, but let me help break it down because I am someone who has been up and down throughout my life. Um, I've been, now I've been like more on the thicker side in the past couple years, but honestly, since my late 20s, I've been athletic, athletically built. But for most of my life prior to my late 20s, I was an overweight girl. I would say from, from maybe 18 to like, 21 ish I got smaller but I was kind of more the size I was now but I wasn't really athletically built I just got smaller because I kind of I changed my diet pretty much I started going to the gym um and really so I'm saying all this to say when I first and also when I first became a runner I got really really small and um a little too small to be honest looking back but the thing is, as tricky is when you lose a lot of weight, especially quickly, your brain does not catch up to how you look. It takes a while. And honestly, that's why, I think that's one of the many reasons why losing weight slowly is probably almost always the best approach. And for me, I was intentionally trying to lose the weight quickly the way I did. It's just once I became a runner, things just fell off. And my metabolism was just like, I had amazing an amazing metabolism once I really started working out. Um, also, too, I was overtraining like crazy, so I was kind of over exercising. Like I, which you should never do that, but that is what I was doing. And I think Emily, we're seeing this on TV. She's kind of doing the same thing to a certain degree. You can kind of tell that's what's happening with her. And um, yeah, so she still has a lot of insecurities that she has not. Is still there because her body just recently changed. It's, it's, she hasn't had time to sit with her new body for some time for it to like click like, girl, you're not the overweight girl anymore. Um, and to be comfortable in her skin. And hopefully she gets there. And I know with me that now that I'm older, whether I'm, because right now I'm bigger than I want to be right now, but I look good. Okay. I have, I've made it to the point now where I have closet, like I have clothes for when I'm this size, I have clothes for when I'm smaller and more my ideal weight, and I have clothes in between. Like I'm not gonna get rid of my smaller clothes. I got rid of my smallest clothes because I'll never get down to that size again. But the clothes, but the size that I know I can get back to, I did not get rid of because I know I can get back to it. And then the really, really heavy clothes I have from when I was really overweight, those been gone. Cause I'm never getting back to that either. Like I have like a range of clothes that I keep in my closet. 
And I don't know if that's recommended, but that's what I do. But yes, I know I'm spending a little bit more time on this, but like the this is the thing, this is the Emily that I kind of do like on this show. I do like that we're getting more of this from Emily, her vulnerability and her really stating how she feels because it isn't spoken about enough how when you have been looked at as kind of the bigger girl, especially if you're tall and a little bit more not traditionally built, if you will, it can get to you because you stick out like a sore thumb. Um, and the fashion show triggered it for her. And I think previews for this episode is going to be coming up. I think it's going to, I think she's going to implode on it. I think, um, I think we saw previews actually that she is going to talk to Heather about it. But anyway, so besides that though, Tamara talks to, um, Tamara, I'm sorry, Tamara and yeah, Heather talk about Katie. And Tamara is still trying to get Heather to give Katie a chance. And Heather states, stated what happened. She's like, yeah, she tried to apologize again. I did cut her off. I know I did, but I just don't want to keep talking about it because to me, it just seems like she's not taking any accountability. But then Tamara added some extra tea that her and Katie talked about. And that is, for one, Kate, you know, Tamara states the obvious, like, you know, she, Tam, like, you know, sorry, my cat's distracted me. Gina did set Katie up. That's one part. We know this, though. And Heather's like, I'm aware of it, which I still understand why she's still okay with that. And then, anyway, and then she tells her that Katie told her that Gina said that she's willing to like just kind of f the friendship between you know katie and gina and you know apologize to heather right away because she wants her clients for real estate that is now what they're linging with and yeah i don't know if i believe it or not but gina of course moth to flame and tells Heather, and by the way, this is the day of the event that she's talking to her about this. And this is at the event before the event starts. Which I'm just like, Tamara, girl. And, but Heather, the way she is, she's very demure, very mindful. She's like, we're not going to do this today. I will talk to her about it another time. But yeah, okay. I heard you. I see it. Thank you, Tamara, for letting me know. But that's that on that. So that's how that ended. Okay. So the event finally officially starts. So this, before, this is like, so, and you know, um, Heather states a pleasantry to the crowd. And the event's for family equality. And then so the ladies do the fashion show. And all the ladies look good. They kind of killed it, to be honest. Um, and then... Um, Heather then states that, um, so basically after everything goes well, she does her speech, the event, you know, attention in the event is kind of over with. They're doing the mix and mingling thing afterwards because basically the event kind of, you know, the, the crescendo event is done. So now they're just mix and mingling and it's a mixer now at this point. So... Heather does come to Gina. She says, I do want to talk to you, but not today, but we're going to need to talk tomorrow. And Gina's like, crap, I'm in trouble again. And Gina's like, I don't know what this is about, but I thought, you know, Heather forgave me already. And it's just really annoying that this is being rehashed um, to a certain degree, but not really because I don't think Heather and Gina really resolved anything when they were talking before because Gina doesn't take accountability for anything. And side note, spoiler alert, she still didn't. Anyway, and so, and then Tamara tells Katie what happened, talking to Heather, and Katie's like, Gina's never gonna forgive me after this. And it's like, you know, it is what it is. And honestly, her saying that was kind of a weird statement to me, because I'm just like, if Gina said all that, why would she never forgive you? Anyway. So then, 
Um, Jen talks to Gina about Katie and, you know, she's like, yeah, Katie is mad at you because you keep calling her a liar and she feels like you set her up. And Gina's like, oh my gosh, we're still talking about this. And also the fact that Gina's like, well, she is a liar, which that's the other thing. It's like, Gina, you can't keep calling someone a liar when you did do what you do, did. Like, I just, like, both of these ladies are not taking accountability. That's, that's a fact. The fact of the matter is neither of them are taking accountability all the way. They're just pay, playing the game of hot potato of who did what. Um, bringing up a tired storyline from last season. Anyway, so then, um... All the ladies are trying to get Heather, not Heather, all the ladies are now trying to get Shannon and Alexis to talk. Alexis does want to talk to Shannon and like, you know, clear the air. And Shannon's not interested as she should not be. And so Shannon's like, she's like, you know, it's time to go. Cause um, Shannon and um, Vicky have a show. You know, they're still doing the Trace Amiga show. Um, and they just want to be done with it. Um, I know there is a gnat in here and it's kind of annoying. <laughs> Maybe because I'm talking Real Housewives and gnat shows up. Um, call back. Anyway, so basically Sh Shannon says goodbye to all the ladies, but then goes to Alexis and is like, okay, I know you wanted to talk, but I don't want to talk to you. And then she leaves. I was like, <laughs> I love it, Shannon. Love it. And of course, Alexis is like, oh my gosh, she's always being a storm. Like, I, Alexis be thinking the things that she says is hidden and never does hit the way she thinks it's going to hit. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. And then come the next day, so it's the next day, they leave the place that they're staying at and they uh, are getting ready to do a bike ride to a vineyard and basically have like a wine day. What kind of day? Um, that side note, I did not really get to go to a winery at all while I was in Maine, which makes me sad because they have a ton of wineries. But I did get to go to some breweries. But yeah, next time. I'm going to basically need to book a longer trip in one particular area. And then it'll be amazing. But anyway, neither here nor there. So Gina is still talking about the Travis thing, the limbos of all that. For those who know, I don't care about this. I'm sorry. I want to care, but I don't. So we're going to move on from that. Um, but it's getting brought up for a reason because we already know Gina's going to use this as an excuse, which she does. Um, instead of taking accountability. Anyway, so then um, Katie is venting to her husband about the Gina thing. Um, before they all leave because she's on FaceTime with her husband. And after that, that's when all the remaining ladies go on the bike ride um, to Russian River vine um, Vineyard. And right away, Gina and Katie get right into the things. And Gina's still calling her a liar, yelling at her, not letting her really talk or anything like that, just doing the most. And, but I will say this, Katie stood her ground very well. And then basically once Gina was not able to do what she needed to do and really try to, you know, change the narrative because Heather also chimed in because she's watching all this happen. She's like, well, I have issues with you, Gina, because, you know, she, you know, what I've been told is you only are forgiving, you know, apologizing to me because you want my rich connections for your real estate and for your business. And then I did believe this initially. And then as Gina actually was like, well, elaborate, what I, what exactly did I say to you? Where's your receipts? This, that, and this, and that. That made Gina seem guilty when it came to that because she's yelling and been, she's been defensive this whole entire time, by the way. But what also makes me think, I don't know if Katie's being truthful about this all the way. She was stuttering stuff. She didn't, she, 
oh, there's some stuttering that was going on. So I will state this, and this is my opinion. They both are lying. And both things and two things can be true. Gina is a social climber and is definitely using Heather and has been this whole entire time. If you've watched the relationship between Gina and Heather from day one, it, it, de it definitely came off that way from the beginning. And, but I feel like if you watch the show, you know that. And so, although the, the real estate connection thing is, could possibly be true, I think Katie was just stating the obvious and doesn't really have actual proof. So I think to a certain extent they're both relying because neither of them will really take full accountability and they don't want to really, you know, pull the veil to let them know, to let us know that basically they talked about this for their storyline. Because neither of them really got anything going on because let's face it, I'm not the only one that doesn't care about this Travis thing. And other than the fact that Katie's new and we, yeah, her family thing is, I would say, kind of an important thing, but well, she is going on. I think she wanted to make a big first impression and it didn't land. Anyway, so long story less long. Gina then makes it all about her, starts spiraling, and just starts talking to ladies about the Travis thing. So there, therefore, Gina didn't take any accountability for anything. Katie and her end up apologizing again about the same thing, even though nothing really was resolved. And that's how that ended. And you, the POV of Heather is she still doesn't believe Katie. And really, I really wish Heather would be like, I don't believe Katie or Gina because she really shouldn't believe either of them. And that's how the episode ended. Um, <laughs> so, yep, that concludes the episode. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. I'm going to watch this next episode that is happening right now. And I'll see you in a little bit. And anyway, bye.